Hello Internet, says Skorakowski, and today we'll be exploring the Righteous Blood, Ruthless Blades adventure, Pleasures of the Harbor. Written by Brendan Davis and Jeremy Bai, it was released in 2020 as a free downloadable adventure on the Osprey Games website. From what I understand, it was originally intended to be included in the RBRB core book, along with the adventure The Obsidian Bat, which I've reviewed before, but due to the book's page count, it ended up being cut. And while it can be played as a standalone adventure, it ties in very well as a sequel to The Obsidian Bat, offering us a different type of adventure that we can play with the game. It's an investigative scenario, and where the hero are hired to locate a kidnapped man, immersing them in a web of intrigue and rivalries with legendary martial artists from the world. The player characters need to not only find their target, but be able to navigate a dangerous web of which faction it is they should align with and which faction they should avoid. The scenario was pretty short, coming in at just 14 digest-sized pages, so it's essentially seven full-size pages, and it gives us a very cool setting set in a floating city with multiple gangs, and it casts several of the NPCs that you can find in the RBRB core book, and it has some very powerful, unique weapons that the player characters, if they play their cards right, might be able to get their hands on. It took my players and I five or six hours in order to complete the adventure, and we had a lot of fun doing it. So what I'm going to do is offer my tips, my criticisms, and a few suggestions as a game master who has successfully run this adventure. And I'm Check the NPC. I'm here to give it to you from a player side of things as I get to try out my highly trained investigative skills on a Wuxia game. But first, a word from our sponsor, World Anvil. Whether you're making a tabletop campaign or writing a novel, World Anvil is the ultimate all-in-one world-building software suite. You can organize and manage your world, and tracking and linking all the locations, timelines, cultures, races, character histories, and linking them all together for easy access. You can then link all these into an interactive nesting maps, giving you all the information you want for each location just right at your fingertips and accessible during the game, going from this continent down to this region region inside of it, to this particular city, to this specific building inside this particular city, all the way down to this character inside this specific building in this particular city in this particular region. It is really, really cool. You can also plot out your relationships and diplomacy webs, how various characters and factions all stand with one another, you know, different rivalries and alliances and how they all link together. Not only keeping yourself organized and getting all this straight but and remembering it all, but also as a way that is shared. If you ever tried to share your campaign or novel world with someone who's kind of looking like a chaos of madness as you're trying to explain it to them and they're completely lost going like, yeah, well, World Anvil is how you can share your world in a way that's easy to understand and share with other people. And it doesn't matter which game or setting, it could be fantasy, historic, modern day, science fiction, whatever setting it is you want. And while it doesn't need to be specifically tied to any particular game system, World Anvil is already set up to support dozens of popular RPG systems with more getting added all the time. So just simply go to the link below and enter the promo code SETH for 51% off a premium to subscription to get started world building. And as a longtime game master and as a multi-series author, I wish this was something that I could have had decades and decades ago, but now this is available and something you can get. So hit the link below, enter the code SETH for 51% off and get to world building. And now, back to the video. But before we go any further, I must warn you that there will be spoilers. So any players in the audience, please stop here. But send your Game Master this way to see about running this adventure for you. But if you keep going and you spoil yourself, you'll be fed to the sharks. Okay, Game Masters, let's dive in. The adventure is set in the coastal city of Aotown, or Aotown. I'm not completely sure at all how you're supposed to pronounce that, so I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Now, if you are doing this as a sequel to the Obsidian Bat Adventure, which ends around Kafing, it takes two weeks by boat or a month and a half by land to travel between the locations. The town itself isn't as much of a town as it's a floating city made from a bunch of barges and boats that are all lashed together, and it was established by a pirate as a hub of gambling and pleasure. A whole city dedicated to gambling and pleasure? Holy crap! Guys, who are going to live here now? This, this is my home. 
and at a moment's notice it can convert into a fleet and depart and just sail away and scatter. The module gives us this map, which is pretty cool. However, it is covered in spoilers with all the adventure marks, you know, clearly marked on it and the sea cave clearly visible, meaning that we can't give this to our players without ruining the mystery and telling them where all the important places are. So with a little Photoshop, I made this map for it, which removes the cave and you know, leaving something to be discovered by the players and leaves only location A, the marker for the morning market. Now, any game masters wishing to use my modified maps could go and download that at the link in the video description below. I don't need it anymore, so please, by all means, use it and have fun. The heroes are summoned by Heartless Dagger, one of the most beautiful and the number one killer in the martial arts world, who has to meet them outside of town. Now, being that's a pretty vague destination, just outside of town, like was this a parking lot or something, I had her invite them to a tea house inn about an hour outside the city called the Songbird Inn. And simply use Auntie Yang's wine shop from the floor plan in the core book, and I said that Heartless Dagger was staying there for the duration of the adventure. Now she tells the player characters that she's looking for her uncle, who was kidnapped by righteous killer Long to cover his gambling debts. Unfortunately, she has so many former lovers in AO Town that she's wished to avoid to not have any involvement in this whole thing known, which is why she's hiring the player characters to go in and find him for her. Oh, I understand that. So many former lovers that you can't even go in the whole city no more out of fear of running into one of them and it being awkward. Totally relatable problem. I get you there. So many former lovers. Guys, I can't relate to this at all. As payment for finding her uncle, she offers the player characters the Asura Trident, one of the highly coveted unique weapons of the martial arts world. She offer, also offers them a large sum of money if they help her find him. Now, the module doesn't say how much money that is, so I had her offer five gold tail. And also, just for our campaign, the player characters were uh, looking for her since they did the Obsidian Bad Adventure because she had an information about the big bad villain that they were seeking for their campaign reasons, so she went ahead and offered as a final reward if they helped find her uncle that you know she was going to tell them where their sworn enemy was, meaning that if they wanted to ever find him, they needed to help her retrieve her uncle. Holy crap, so I get to have information on finding my enemy, a small fortune in money, and a unique magical trident? Oh, no problem at all, boss. We are the ones for this job. We will get you your uncle back to you right away, no problem at all. So, uh... What's his name and what does he look like? The module never says this, which I find kind of weird. Heartless Dagger is extremely intelligent, so she should have some rough description of this uncle of hers. You know, maybe saying how you know she hasn't seen him in ten years, so he might not look the same as he remembers. And but she should also have a name for him, like you know, what to call this guy. Which of course, whatever name it is she gives him isn't going to be true. But she should have at least prepared an answer for you know her dear sweet uncle that she just made up. So game masters have a name and rough description ready for her to give out to them. Now, what's really going on here is Sun Lan the Yama Queen, a feared martial artist and poet, possesses two of the top ten weapons, her signature Needles of the Courts of Hell and the Heart-Shaping Crown, which is a mysterious weapon that has the power to hypnotize and control people. Now, while many assume the Heart-Shaping Crown is a headpiece of some sort, it's actually a crazy old man that has no free will of his own and only follows the instructions of whoever it is that controls him. Now, Righteous Killer Long discovered that the, the, the crown was a person and felt that enslaving a human being was wrong and cruel, so he decided to set this old man free. He hired ten acrobatic actors who could all impersonate him. And then one of the actors invited Sun Lan to a night of gambling at the Mountain God Casino, and while she was distracted playing cards or dice with this person that she believed was Righteous Killer Long, the real Righteous Killer broke into her room and stole the heart-shaping crown. Now, when she discovered that the old man was gone, Sun Lan killed the actor and is now hunting for the real Righteous Killer Long somewhere in the city. Okay, so let me get this straight. Righteous Killer Long is really a good guy, and Heartless Dagger's dear sweet uncle ain't her uncle at all, but is actually one of the most powerful weapons in the world, who was stolen from one of the most ruthless murdering martial artists in the world who definitely wants to get him back and she ain't gonna want us to have him. But if we don't kidnap this old man from this good guy and give him over to Heartless Dagger, she is not known for her forgiveness and she is gonna be coming after us. Guys, we got a problem. 
The Adventure setup is a bunch of locations and events. There are 13 numbered locations, and then you also have location A, which is the market. We have two rival and very different gangs that operate in the city, the Black Turtle Society and the Golden Crabs. Now, one thing that I recommend here is that you add some sign or some markings that are denoting the different gang territories as the player characters enter them. Maybe you know colored ribbons hanging from the various mooring posts and businesses, or maybe carved or painted symbols or something, you know, signifying which territory the player characters are in. And I feel it's much cooler to show the player characters rather than just simply telling them that they've entered this gang's territory. Another thing to mention is the sharks. In our search for inspiration, Sunland is committing several brutal murders, brutal and artistic murders throughout the city, you know, working herself up to her, her masterpiece when she can find the, uh, the proper muse for it that's going to draw a righteous killer long out from hiding. Now, the blood from all these killings is drawing more and more sharks to the water, so be sure that every time the player characters travel between locations, you know, mention to them how there's more and more fins that are visible circling around or uh, dark shapes that are moving around beneath the, the planks beneath the waves. Now, once they arrive in the city, they can begin gathering rumors, which will give them a few locations in order to check out, gather clues, which of course is going to lead them to even more locations. Now, every time the player characters travel from one location to another, they're going to have an event. And you roll on this table to see if it's a Righteous Killer event or a Sun Lawn event. Now, each of those is going to have its own tables of various things that might happen. Sun Lawn's including the, the player character stumbling across some of her brutal killings, or while well, many of Righteous Killer Longs include encounters with the different actors that are impersonating and trying to intimidate or throw the player characters off the trail. My favorite one of these is when two of those actors got their schedules crossed. So there we were, right? We're walking along between two locations, minding our own business, when all of a sudden, out of the darkness, Righteous Killer Long comes flipping down from a rooftop, brandishing his weapon and ordering that we gotta get out of town. But then at the exact same time, Righteous Killer Long comes cotwheeling out of an alleyway behind us, brandishing his weapon and ordering that we gotta get out of town. And we're looking back and forth between them, going, what the hell? And they look at each other and they're all like, what the hell? And then they just just break character and start yelling at each other about who is upstaging who and all this crap. And then they pause and they look at us and holding our weapons out and getting ready to knock in some heads. And then they split, running off in two different directions, right? So then we got to give split up in order to give chase in two different directions across town in order to get some answers. <laughs> Good times. Now, with these actors, there are nine of them remaining. The encounter table states you know, which one it is that they need in any given time, you know, so simply listing their name, and the module lists them out. Six of them are pretty generic repeats of one another, while three are unique, and all have different information that the player characters can learn from them if they're interrogated. But with all the names, I found it a little bit confusing, kind of a word salad of different names, and it was difficult to navigate in-game, so I wrote the encounter number to each of their names just as a quick way of identifying which actor I rolled any time I did the encounter table and you know keep everything running very smoothly. Now, speaking of running smoothly, and we're just gonna go ahead and use this as an example because we're talking about about it right now. Between these actors, we have an assortment of stuff, you know, weapons, signature abilities, counters, and each of which has its own special rules. And well, yes, each of them lists the page number beside them. I just found it a lot easier to save a lot of flipping pages just to list all that stuff out in one place. So I made some cheat sheets for this adventure. And you can see on the left here is Righteous Killer and his actors. And I simply cut and pasted all that stuff out of the core book into one easy to reference spot, you know, making it much smoother for me to keep track of everything in game and not have to stop and pause and look anything up. And I did this for all the NPCs in the adventure. So you can see that this page had not just Righteous Killer and his people, but also the Golden Crab Gang and the Black Turtle Society with all of their special abilities and counters just right there at my fingertips. You know, here's the same thing I did for Lady Rin, Butcher Knee, and Thief Goddess Lee. You know, we can all be encountered around the city as various NPCs. Now, this is a basic hack that I recommend for any game masters of Righteous Blood Ruthless Blades. Yeah, my actual biggest criticism of the game itself is just the sheer number of special rules for all the you know, various weapons and equipment and special abilities encountered, and it can be really overwhelming for a game master if you have a lot of NPCs going on in a single adventure. So once again, I'm just going to repeat this recommendation to prepare something like this when 
whenever you run any adventure for this game. Anyway, back to this adventure. We roll events every time the player characters move from one location to another, but we only do this for the first 10 events. The 11th event is set, and that Sunland enacts her plan to draw Righteous Killer out. So she and her minions slaughter everyone at the Schooner uh, Casino, but unless the player characters have already agreed to work with her and have already made some sort of alliance with her, uh, she and her minions are going to dress up as the player characters when they commit this massacre, and they're going to frame them for all these killings. Righteous Killer Long is going to hear about these murders, and his sense of justice is going to draw him out of hiding. So the 12th and final event is him and his remaining actors that are still alive confronting who he believes is responsible for this casino massacre, which is going to be pretty bad news if that's the player characters that he believes committed these crimes. Now, any fight that they have is then going to be followed by Sunland swooping in to clean everything up and take care of anyone that's still standing and recovering the old man. All this to say is that this adventure is a time limit, and if the heroes can't solve the case, get the crown, and get out of town till after the 10th event, then a whole bunch of people are going to die and they're going to get the blame for it. This is why we recommend that game masters regularly tell the players how each time they go out there's more and more sharks circling in the water, kind of hinting that everything is escalating to something bloody. Now, there is no correct way to complete this adventure. Maybe the player characters team up with Righteous Killer Long and they save the old man. Maybe they align with Sun Lan and recover the crown for her, or maybe they fulfill their contract and they deliver him to Heartless Dagger. Maybe they keep the heart-shaping crown for themselves. So however they do it, they're going to be making some powerful enemies from somebody. And I do like the moral dilemma to it all in that there is no uh, correct way that they're supposed to do it. Overall, going in, I really wasn't sure how well the setup of all the locations and the events that are happening as the player characters are moving between the different events would work out, or the ticking time clock aspect of it would be, you know, with the you've only got 10 that you can do before it escalates to the set 11th and 12th one. But it ended up working very well once we played it. And I really like the twist as the player characters realize that this uh, old man that they're looking for and Righteous Killer kidnapping him, you know, how it was actually a rescue attempt and all the actors that are impersonating him that pop up at different times and how really this is a plot by very powerful martial artists that are very ruthless. They're actually just pulling the strings and they're using the player characters as pawns in order to get whatever it is that they want. My only real criticism of the adventure is I wish that it came with a player map already established with all the location tags. And uh, then I also wish that Heartless Dagger's story that she uses to hire them about the missing uncle, which there's a little bit more to it, you know, such as just making a name for him or offering some sort of physical description. After all, her spies evidently managed to glean that the heart-shaped crown was a person and was an old man. So I figured that maybe they probably should have also gotten some rough physical description of what he looked like. But those are pretty easy fixes to make. And I've already made a player map for it that game masters can use, so my biggest criticisms are pretty much taken care of. You can download the adventure for free on the Osprey Games website, link below. I suggest checking it out. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our stuff, such as game reviews or how to's, just hit that subscribe button. Till next time, heroes, you have a great day. You know, I know the reason that it took you so long to get around to doing this review video is because after this, there is no more Righteous Blood Ruthless Blades that's been published. We have covered everything made for the game. So, such a good game too. It's like saying goodbye to an old friend. Anyway, you gotta find a good excuse for me to wear this outfit again though, because it is comfy.